Good morning and welcome to worship on this uh, Communion Sunday here at Glendale Heights United Methodist Church in Durham, North Carolina. My name is John Shugart. I serve as the pastor here and I'm joined this morning uh, by Amy Davis, our organist and choir director. It's a special day. Uh, We'll be participating in communion liturgy here outside the church following this service, so we'd invite you to come uh, immediately following our service that will end around 1130 and we'll try to start at about 11.45 this morning. So we want to welcome you to a time of worship. We're so glad you're with us. Go ahead and uh, post your uh, prayer requests and uh, celebrations and concerns in the comments box. And uh, and we uh, will start this morning with a prelude. Uh, So I would invite you to center yourself, to find a, a comfortable spot, grab your Bible and hymnal, and begin to focus on why we're here to worship this morning. Good morning, and if you're just joining us, we are so glad to welcome you to a time of worship with Glendale Heights United Methodist Church here in Durham, North Carolina. My name is John. I serve here as the pastor. Um, In the comments section, you can go ahead and start filling out those prayer requests, celebrations, and concerns. We will share those on the screen later, Uh, but we hope that this next 30 minutes or so is a time of uh, blessing for you, um, a time where you might experience an encounter with the living God and uh, that you might be uh, experience peace this morning. Like I said, this uh, is Communion Sunday, and we will be participating for those of us in Durham who want to join us outside on the patio at the church immediately following this worship service. We'll begin that around 11.45, and, and the communion... Um, Elements will be blessed there. We'll do the liturgy together, and that will also be on Facebook Live, so you can participate later. And if you need communion elements brought to you, please just indicate that to us by um, text in the comments, by email, and we will will make sure and do that. Also, uh, Stevie and Emily are going to be coming up today, so you'll be able to see Stevie. Um, And we hope that this is a great time this morning. It looks like we'll have good weather to be able to do that. This upcoming Wednesday, we will have a, um, a Bible study via Zoom on the Psalms. We're getting close to Psalm 150, to the end of our uh, summer Psalm Bible study series. Uh, lots of alliteration there, uh, but we're excited that um, we're almost towards the end, and this will probably uh, be the, the second to last Bible study for this Psalm series. So now if you want to flip in your hymnal to 157, the words will be on the screen to Jesus shall reign and we'll sing that together.
Amen. Um, this morning, as we come to a time of musical reflection, I would invite you to spend some moments in prayer, uh, lift up those prayer requests and celebrations and concerns that you have, uh, but also uh, share them in the comment section and, and following the musical reflection, we will share those on the screen so that we as a congregation can uh, pray for one another and uh, know the concerns on our hearts. So I'd invite you now to listen to this musical reflection as you enter your prayer requests into the comment section. So now as we enter into a time of prayer, I would invite you as the prayer requests are read on the screen, when you um, hear me say, Lord, in your mercy, you can respond with hear our prayers. Um, so Cynthia wants us to pray for uh, Tom's sister who is awaiting results from a biopsy. Um, so Tom's sister, Susan, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Um, Eddie invites us to pray for um, his sister and her daughter. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, my mom, Tracy Shugart, um, wants us to pray for her uh, co-worker, Lisa, who's undergoing chemotherapy. So, for Lisa, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tom Simmons invites us to pray for Bill Peeler and his family as he will be coming home on the 16th. And Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So let's, let's pray together. Lord God, <clears throat> almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity and in all we do, direct us to fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. So God, we give you thanks for this day, for a time of worship, for all of the ways that we experience and see you around us. God, we pray for all of the prayer requests that have been um, written in the comments, but also just that are written on our hearts. We lift those up to you, and God, we ask that you would 
be present in, uh, in a mighty way for those who are in need. Um, we celebrate where we have means and reason to celebrate. And God, we pray this morning um, for a time of communion, whether that's by uh, virtual participation or here outside at the church. We ask that you would protect all of those who are coming to participate in that, um, that we might have um, an experience with the Holy Spirit, and then from that experience be sent out into the world um, to care for your people. So we ask all these things in your Son's name. Amen. Um, so in, in an effort to uh, try to keep this service uh, brief so that we can get to communion within this 11 o'clock hour, uh, this, this will be um, less, of, less of a sermon and more of just kind of a, a devotion. Um, we'll be reading uh, from Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 21, and <clears throat> this is probably familiar if you grew up in church. This is one of the stories of Jesus feeding the crowds. So this is the feeding of the 5,000. Um, and, and so hear these words, and as we, as we read them, I would invite you to uh, reflect on <clears throat> just what this scripture is saying to you today, and then we'll reflect together. So the words, words will be on the screen. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. And when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And they replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over, the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. And this is the word of God for the people of God, and together we say, thanks be to God. So this morning we're going to share, uh, for those of you who are able to come in a communion service that is, uh, again, not inside our sanctuary, but rather outside. And as I thought about being gathered uh, sort of around um, the table this morning outside, I, I thought of this story from, from Scripture of Jesus taking um, what the disciples had, sort of this meager amount, and blessing it and distributing it to the disciples who then were able to feed the multitudes. Uh, so I was kind of just reflecting on that over the last few days, um, and so I just kind of want to share my reflections and then ask a few questions and uh, would ask you to reflect on those throughout the week. So this passage from Scripture um, is directly following Jesus receiving the news that John the Baptist had been killed. So John the Baptist was um, his friend um, and his, his sort of fellow in ministry, his cousin, and uh, when he when he heard this, it says he withdrew. And that stuck out to me from that first verse because Jesus was grieving. And Jesus, in his grief, wanted to be alone. And I think right now, uh, sort of collectively, we've spent time experiencing grief in different ways. Uh, and a lot of times that makes us want to withdraw and, and to be alone. Uh, but the crowds had also heard the news. They had heard this news of John the Baptist, and when they heard that, they were drawn to Jesus. They followed Jesus from their towns and met him out sort of in this, um, this field or this place. And so in their grief, the crowd was drawn to Jesus. 
And it doesn't say that Jesus avoided the crowd. It doesn't say that Jesus tried to get away or he wanted to stay alone because he was so sad. It says he had compassion for them and he cured their sick. So in, even in his grief, Jesus cared for the people there. And so then it says uh, when it was evening that the disciples wanted Jesus to send the people away um, to go and, and feed themselves at the, the town or villages because they were sort of in a deserted place with no food. And Jesus said, you know, basically, you give them something to eat. Those were his words. They were instructions. And they, they replied and said, you know, we only have these five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, you know, <laughs> Jesus is saying, no, it's, it's your job as my disciples to feed the crowd, to care for these people, um, not to send them away. And, and rightly so, I think the disciples were worried that they didn't have enough. There was a, a mindset of scarcity of what they had. Um, for them, five loaves and two fish might not even be enough food just for, you know, the disciples and for Jesus. And he says, uh, you know, in their, in their worry about this scarcity, he says, bring it to me. And I just remember reflecting this week on, on that. Bring them here to me. And I think if we bring what we have to Jesus, Jesus doesn't see scarcity, but rather abundance. And so he, he took the, the loaves and the fish and he, he took the bread and, and he blessed it and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples who then were able to give it to the crowd. And it says all ate and were filled. So there was enough. Rightly so, they were worried. In their worry, Jesus said, bring what you have to me and blessed it. And then there was enough. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. You know, when I uh, served in the Bahamas, I worked for a mission organization, and we would have youth groups come and, and serve for a week. And the Bahamas is an island, or a group of islands, but where I live, the island of Eleuthera, was, um, you know, it, it was a four-hour boat ride from the nearest sort of big city of Nassau, or a 15-minute plane ride. But what that meant was, there was a sense of scarcity on the island. You know, what, what you had was there um, or it needed to be brought by plane or by boat. And you couldn't get things from Amazon in two days. Uh, a gallon of milk there was $12, so it was about three times as expensive. And, and so people really had this mindset of, of scarcity. But what I also noticed is that any time in the course of a week that we needed something, even if it was like a, a bus part for a school bus, if, we, if it looked like we were going to run out of food, we always had enough. And I don't know if that was because we were, we were serving the community, uh, but it, although the people there had this mindset of scarcity, so they kept a lot of things. You know, there was, there was fields of, of car parts and, and people would, you know, have five pound bag of grits or you know they they would try to keep things on hand there was also a sense of communal abundance that they would share things that they would share resources and you know let us know where the the same model school bus was sitting down the island so we could get a car part for that week or uh, when there when there wasn't enough food somebody would would uh, offer to share, or there was, there was always enough. Um, and I remember through that experience thinking that God, God provided in so many ways in that, in that circumstance. And, and so this morning, I, I just have a few questions. Have you ever had an experience where it seemed like there wasn't enough, but there ended up being enough or more? I'd invite you this week to reflect on a situation where you where you didn't think there was going to be enough. There was a mindset of scarcity, but there ended up being enough or more. The second question is, is how are you hearing Jesus say, no, you feed them? I think a lot of times in our faith journey, we, um, we think it's somebody else's responsibility to care for people, um, 
to do to do the hard things. Um, and and I think in this passage we hear Jesus saying to the disciples, "No, you give them something to eat." So how have you heard that call lately? And the third thing is for all of us as a congregation. We're going through a time of, of communal grief, of uh, national grief, of, of a worldwide um, grief in so many ways. Uh, we are uh, prone to withdrawal, I think, sometimes. We're prone to try to isolate ourselves or to go it alone. Um, and we don't have to. And so the third question is, how might we show compassion to the crowd? How might we as disciples of Jesus see the example of, of a Jesus who is grieving the, the death of a friend, but then when the crowd comes and, and he's needed, he shows compassion? So those are, are the three questions I'd invite you to reflect on this week. Have you had an experience where there was uh, seemingly not enough and then there was enough? How are you hearing Jesus say, no, you feed them? And then how might we show compassion to the crowd. So that's our, our reflection for this week. I'd invite you now to, um, to join me in singing Bread of the World, number 624, and the lyrics will be on the screen. So now I would invite you, um, if you're not joining us here at the church, to uh, hear this prelude and then take a pause, and we'll join you back in about uh, 10 to 15 minutes, um, and uh, we'll have our communion liturgy. You can also um, skip that part this morning. It'll be on Facebook or YouTube later. Um, but if you are joining us after this prelude, uh, you can come to the church You'll have, um, you'll see a, a setup of, of some chairs that are spaced out appropriately. Please wear a mask and we will have communion together. We'll have some handouts for you so that you can participate. So hear this prelude and thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. And please join us in about 15 minutes for our communion liturgy on Facebook Live or in person. <laughs> 